Welcome to Inside Gaming. I'm Brian. It's the weekend roundup. Aaron's back hey, too, everybody. I'm here. Yay. Hello. He's back. All right, let's get to the news. There have been a lot of headlines lately about games that have signed exclusive deals with the Epic Game Store. Well, one developer has turned Epic down. Unfold Games, which made the horror puzzle game Dark, that recently came out, but apparently they were contacted by Epic for an exclusive deal, but studio founder Wad Marhulitz felt like it wouldn't be right to pull it off Steam considering how much attention it attracted there. Epic boss Tim Sweeney later tweeted that he is happy to see Dark succeed. Yeah, I'm happy to see you with that other guy, it's great. Sweeney said, it's a great game and it deserves success. That's why we contacted them, to explore exclusivity. Then Marhulitz dropped the bomb responding, Tim, I'm glad to hear that. If you change your mind and accept Dark to your store non-exclusively, I'll donate 100% of my Epic Games Store revenue to a charity. If you accept, he went on to say, we can pick the charity, or the games community rather, can pick the charity at a later date. But damn, Ooh. it was an ice cold bomb. No response yet from Epic. Of course, there has been a ton of drama over which games become Epic exclusives and which don't. Epic's made a ton of these deals. High profile stuff, The Division 2, Metro Exodus, Borderlands 3. Most recently, there was a ton of drama around Ublix going exclusive to Epic. Lots of developers do it because the company gives them a bigger share of the revenue that their games make. In Epic's case, they get 88% of the revenue versus 70% on Steam. Now, Tim Sweeney has said that Steam has basically been a monopoly as far as the PC marketplace, and he said that Epic would stop doing exclusive deals if Steam would agree to a similar revenue share. No word yet on the charity thing, though. But gamers, they've been annoyed at having to install another launcher. Others have been understandably pissed, though, after pre-ordering games on Steam only to see them move over to the Epic Store. And that totally makes sense. Like uh, yeah. Shenmue 3. Yeah. That was a classic example. Now Marlitz explained why he turned down the exclusivity deal on Medium. He said that Dark was listed on Steam since late 2018 and wrote that a lot of Steam users added Dark to their wish list and patiently waited for its release date for almost a year. He added pulling the game off Steam, especially so close to the release date, would surely make a lot of Dark fans unhappy. Will I make less money on Steam than I would have by accepting the financial guarantee from the Epic Store? Probably, but it's a fair price to pay for establishing an ongoing trust between my studio and its customers. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that makes complete sense. Yeah. And you know, what's funny about this is uh, Epic Game Store has said repeatedly, kind of like, hey, we're doing this for the gamers. Like right. eventually it's it's the, it's the idea right. of you need to eat your vegetables because right. it's good for you. Uh, Okay, well, here's a chance for you to get some good PR. Take him up on his offer. Yeah. Also, I think for a, a new studio like this, it, it's it's almost like you're like a, a punk band or an indie band. Your yeah. relationship with your audience is all you have. Exactly. If that's gone, you're gone. So right. I get why he did it. It was smart. I think it was the almost the honorable thing to do, really. Yeah. So there you go. Not everybody apparently is swayed by all that sweet epic money. Moving on, the sci-fi thriller Control recently came out from Remedy. It's gotten some good reviews, but it's apparently got a major problem. It doesn't play that great on the base PS4 and Xbox One. The team at Digital Foundry did an analysis. They always do a great job of Control's performance. They called it a brilliant game, but that it had major frame rate issues on the consoles. In some cases, it dropped as low as 10 frames frames per second on base Xbox Ones and PS4s. Ugh. And the PS4 apparently performed the worst. According to Digital Foundry, they wrote, it ran so poorly that we ran through a range of checks from rebooting the console completely to running control on other PS4 units. The fan apparently kicked in hard on a launch model. They went on to say nothing helped. This is how the game actually plays and it's not pretty. The Xbox One X performed the best, no surprise there, and Digital Foundry said the PS4 Pro was a decent runner up. Needless to say, they said that the base PS4 and Xbox One versions need some work getting into shape. So yeah, that uh, ugh, might want to work on that. Bungie recently announced that they're delaying Destiny 2 Shadowkeep expansion, and in a new interview, they talked about 
why they made that decision. Production director Scott Taylor told VG247 that team health is really important to us and added, we want to continue to be proud to work at Bungie because it's a great place to work. Being able to balance that was better for the game, but it was also neat to see how the team reacted. Sounds like they wanted to avoid some crunch issues, kind of reading between the lines there. He said this is the first time they've done something like this, but they've been encouraged by the support from the community. The expansion it was originally supposed to release September 17th, now it's scheduled to come out October 1st. You know what? That's totally cool. Yeah. Take the time. Take I the think, time. Make it great. This will be great. I think most gamers now when they hear of things like this are understanding. Sure. And, and uh, like with the Metroid Prime 4 when Nintendo was like, we need to start over. They're yeah. like, okay, you know what? Just be up front I, I would much rather have a great game yep. that, that pulls me in than a game that I go, cool, I have it, I guess. And with... Uh, like a Anthem. great game with <laughs> non-burned-out employees who yeah. want to leave the industry forever after right. they finish. Yeah. So, yeah, take care of your people. All right, it is time for a five-second review. Let's go. All right, now let's talk about some games coming out next week. Up first, it's time to cheat on your girlfriend and deal with sheep. Wait, what? That came out wrong. Catherine Full Body is an enhanced version of Catherine, the 2011 version. Other than your girlfriend, Catherine with a K, and the person you're cheating on her with, Catherine with a C, you now have a third romantic option. Rin. There have been some quality of life updates in this version along with an easier than easy level of difficulty called safety mode for people who just care about the story and want to cheat on their girlfriend and five new endings added to the game. You can pick it up for PS4 September 3rd. Torchlight 2 is a hack and slash action RPG filled with epic battles, bountiful treasure, and a fully randomized world. You got four classes to choose from, each with a variety of play styles and customizable cosmetic features, but you don't have to traverse this open world alone, it's got online co-op. It's been out on Steam for about eight years, but it's finally coming to consoles. It's coming to the PS4, Xbox One, and Switch September 3rd. Porting over to the Switch and PC, it's the Spyro Reignited Trilogy. The Purple Dragon is back and he's looking better than ever. This remastered collection contains the first three games in the Spyro series, Spyro the Dragon, Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage, and Spyro Year of the Dragon. Of course, the collection was already released on PS4 and Xbox One November of last year. Now you can play these platforming classic on Switch and PC starting September 3rd. More remastered goodness, it's Final Fantasy VIII Remastered. The mega hit RPG is returning with graphical enhancements, battle assist options, game speed boost, and more. Have fun with the junction system, you guys. Have fun, that's all I'm gonna say. However, if you're a fan of physical media, unfortunately we got bad news, it's only available for digital download. Maybe Square Enix will change their mind in the future, but for now, if you wanna play it, you'll have to pick it up digitally on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch September 3rd. In Children of Morta, it's an action RPG where you play as the Burgons, a family of heroes and guardians battling against the corruption. But while fighting corruption sets the background, the meat of the story centers around this family standing together while the world around them is being devoured by darkness. The developers add, witness their emotions run high as they struggle to help one another return peace to the land. Witness the growth of a family. Ah, Hallmark moment. It's releasing on September 3rd for PC. Keeping the RPGs rolling, it's Sin Slayers. It's an RPG with roguelike elements set in a dark fantasy world. You'll create, equip, and lead a team of heroes. Each unit will have its own abilities and weaknesses. Journey through primeval forests, crypts full of foreign warriors, and more to defeat the Sin Lords, which definitely sounds like the name of a porn company. Get sweet loot and fulfill quests. It's coming to PC September 5th. Fractor is an isometric puzzle adventure game that follows a veiled young hero who has set out on a perilous quest in a mysterious labyrinth full of glowing black architecture. You'll explore this world of shadows, discover secrets in the dark, and outsmart ominous creatures while solving puzzles and listening to an eerie ambient soundtrack. You can pick it up for PC September 5th. In Hyperforma, you play as a lone explorer making his journey through the relic cyberspace known as the Ancient Network. During your search, you'll interact with monumental living interfaces, overcome obstacles, and hack your way through sophisticated virtual defense systems to discover truths about dramatic events of the past. 
It's coming to the Switch September 5th. Space Cows is a twin stick shooter featuring a weaponized toilet plunger and intense zero gravity combat. However, it's the mature content description on Steam that really sold me. Here's what it says. Are you ready for the cowness? Well, you gotta be. Space Cows is not safe for work. Prepare yourself for fart jokes, cartoon violence, and total cheesy madness. Impacting content is involved. We warn you, facing terrifying mutants is not cheesy peasy. Keep in mind, best regards doesn't take kids on the move venture. And there's also some nudity. You know what, I'm sold. It's available September 5th for PC and Switch. River City Girls is a sequel to the cult classic River City Ransom, but in River City Ransom, the heroes, Kunio and Riki, teamed up to save their kidnapped girlfriends. But in River City Girls, Kunio and Riki have been kidnapped, and it's up to the girlfriends, Kiyoku and Misaku, to save the day. Oh, they flipped the script. See Flip what they the did there? On you, man. Yep. It promises one or local two player bare knuckle brawling, 16 bit style graphics, and a synth pop soundtrack along with anime cutscenes and manga style intermissions. You can pick this one up on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch September 5th. It's time to live out your basketball dreams on NBA 2K20. The game features the most realistic player control ever, an upgraded motion systems, a slot machine, a new <laughs> dribble size up system, and a new read and react defensive game, and a whole lot of microtransactions. Oh, yeah. They're most advanced ever. My Career Mode is looking to bring a more cinematic experience to the player, complete with Idris Elba and Rosario Dawson. How'd they pay for them? Oh, I, you'll, you'll know when you see the game. Also, for the first time ever, all 12 WNBA teams and over 140 players are also in the game. It's coming out September 5th for PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Creature in the Well is a top-down pinball-inspired hack-and-slash dungeon crawler. That is a lot of words. Anyway, you'll play as the last remaining Bot C unit who must venture in a desert mountain to restore power to an ancient facility that's haunted by a desperate creature. You'll charge up energy orbs and then bounce and ricochet them all around to reactivate dormant machinery and stop a sandstorm. It's releasing September 6th, PC, Xbox One and the Switch. And finally, when Aaron went to look up this next game on Steam, it said he had to be signed in. That is a really good sign of things to come. Gun Gun Pixies is a third person shooter with a twist for mature, cultured gentlemen like myself. Let's just read the Steam description. Tiny but mighty aliens have come to Earth to learn about humans and save their own mother world. Hmm, how are they gonna save it? Through reproduction, I wonder? In a unique spin on a third person shooter, it will be up to you to infiltrate a college girls <laughs> dormitory. They always insist it's college it's girls college. and research human behavior by shooting them with happy bullets in their rooms or in their baths. Oh yeah. Yep. Be stealthy and defeat squids. Mm-hmm. Getting warmer and bosses as you help two pixies complete their mission and repair the social issues on their own planet Pandemo. I love those awkward translations. Repair the social issues. Exactly. You know how you're gonna repair them. It's coming out September 6th, PC and Switch. That is all the news we've got for you today on Inside Gaming. Oh wait, real quick, we wanna give a shout out to Ashley Jenkins. She has now stepped down from Rooster Teeth, but Ashley started this channel. Uh, I was hired by her, Aaron was hired by her. Uh, we owe her a lot, so Absolutely. big shout out to Ashley. Best of luck in the future, we love you a lot, bye. Hard look at them. NBA 2K20 might have set a new bar when it comes to looking like a virtual casino. Because a new trailer for the game reveals that it has a straight up slot machine. Ha <laughs> ha! You do not call that gambling? Surprise! Surprise! Somehow, yeah. I hope they at least put a stool up under the slot machine for the little kids so they can stand on it. It's just gonna be dangerous that the kids have to climb up. They might pull it down on themselves, you know? But then they don't win.